we wake Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done G'day guys, Shane Mostert here. We are out at Cow Swamp today. We are shooting the iPhone 11, no, not the iPhone 11. We're shooting the iPhone 12 Pro astrophotography. Let's get into it. If you're new here, check out the description. Everything that we're talking about tonight is going to be listed down there. Also, if you're new, make sure you subscribe. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, so you see the two videos that I put out each and every week, all about small sensor photography. iPhones, smartphones, GoPros, all those sorts of things, twice a week. Let's get into this video. So, quite a few of you guys have asked me about shooting the iPhone 12 Pro. Am I going to upgrade from the 11 Pro? Based on the specs and what I've seen so far, probably not. If you've got the iPhone 12 Pro and you want to shoot stars, Keep watching, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Cow Swamp, what's it known for? Known for sunsets. They're pretty bloody awesome sunsets. Let's have a look. So, I just know by using photo pills, and I'll link up the top here, how to find where the Milky Way will be at different times of the year and at what date and so forth. I'll link up the top but I just know that it's going to be out here, horizontal, above those dead trees out there. It will make for a pretty bloody good photo. There's a couple of clouds out there and they may give us a bit of hassle, but I think it'll be all right. One of the best things that I enjoy about taking photos of the stars with the phone is it's just so damn easy. All you really need to do is work out where the Milky Way is going to be, and we've just covered that. The mechanics of actually how you do this process on your phone, it really is quite simple. First of all, you go into your camera app. If it's dark enough, it's going to do this for you automatically. The little icon will appear at the top left-hand corner, that yellow icon, that's your night mode. Touch on that. If it's dark enough, it's going to give you the full duration that this phone is capable of. And they are, if it's handheld, so if you're shooting this handheld, it's going to give you a maximum of 10 seconds. If you're shooting it on a tripod, we'll talk, talk about that in a second, shooting on a tripod, you're going to get 30 seconds, and that makes a big difference. Now you can get some great photos from the iPhone 12 Pro, just handheld. You get some great photos just that way. But with astrophotography, when you're shooting stars, light really matters. And the way light comes onto that sensor, there's three ways it comes on. One is with the aperture, and on a phone, we can't do anything about that at all. It's a mechanical thing. You can do it digitally later with things like portrait mode and stuff like that, but to let light into the actual sensor, it's fixed. On the phones, it's fixed. The second thing is ISO, and the way that the iPhone works in night mode, it does the ISO for you anyway. So you don't even need to worry about that. So that's two things we don't even need to worry about. The third thing with proper astrophotography with regular cameras is the shutter speed. And if you're doing it handheld, you've got 10 seconds, as I say, 30 seconds on a tripod. So you think about the longer this is open for, the more light can come into the sensor. So the longer the duration, the better it's going to be. So when you think about that, every chance I get to take photos of the stars, I've always got a tripod with me. That extra 20 seconds makes the world of difference. You can get some good photos handheld, like I say, but you'll get better ones on a tripod. What tripod does it need to be? It can be really anything. Tripods are designed to carry weight. So the way that tripods are generally rated is all about weight. And these things, they, they don't weigh much at all. So any tripod will be fine. I'll tell you what, down the bottom in the description of this video, you'll see all the gear that I use. Um, this one here is a Manfrotto tripod. It's got a Ulanzi uh, phone holder on it and a ball head as well. And it makes for a really good tripod for doing this sort of photography. So we're going to do this handheld first. We'll go into the camera. It's dark enough now 
touch the yellow button, and down the bottom there you see it gives us the wheel, uh, the little slider there, and you push it all the way to the left hand side, and it'll give you the maximum shutter that you can have. Right now, I've got 10 seconds. If I hit the shutter button now, there's two little crosses appear, and what you're trying to do is keep them lined up. And the more they're lined up, throughout the whole photo, the better the photo will be. All right, so that's 10 seconds and the photo is, well, it's okay. Um, it's a reasonably good sunset photo, if you like. So let's put it on a tripod now. The sun is still a little bit on the horizon there. You probably can't see it there. Um, it'll probably turn up in the photo here though, but the stars are out. So we'll certainly get some stars. There's a little bit of cloud there as well. But look, we'll go for 30 seconds now. So we'll go into night mode, we'll hit the focus and lock that first. And we'll hit the shutter button. For some reason, we're only getting 29 seconds. And I'll be honest, I've tried that a few times now with this camera, and I'm only getting 29 seconds. I don't know if that's an iPhone 12 thing, but on the iPhone 11, I was getting full 30. To be honest, it's probably not gonna matter that much. Interesting observation here is that when I upgraded my iPhone 11 Pro to iOS 14, those little crosses were coming up on the on the um, tripod as well. Doesn't do it on the 12. <laughs> oh wow, that, <laughs> that looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good photo. Have a look at this. You can see the you can see the stars there really well. You can see the Milky Way just perfectly. I'm going to say that it's probably the best iPhone that I've shot Milky Way photos with. I think it's better than the iPhone 11. It's, it's pretty good. And I was really wrapped when the iPhone 11 came out with the, uh, the Milky Way photos. I think this does it better. So that's pretty good. That's um, a few points to note here. With the iPhone 11 Pro, when I upgraded to the iOS 14, I had the option of then shooting night mode on the regular lens and on the telephoto lens not on the wide angle lens. On the iPhone 12 Pro, you can, you can shoot low, it gives you the option to shoot low light mode or night mode in all three lenses. That's the wide angle lens, the, well, the ultra wide angle lens, the wide angle lens, and then the telephoto lens, which is interesting. More interesting though is that it really only works with one. It gives you the option to do it and you can do it. This is what you get. This is the wide angle lens, and this is the telephoto lens. Both in 30 seconds or 29 seconds is what it would let me do. Um, but I think you'll agree they're not really worth doing. The main lens though, it does it better than the 11. I think it does it better than the 11. It's pretty bloody good. All right, let's have a look at an edit on this now. What we're gonna do is use one of the QR codes, the free QR codes that I've got on the website. Let's scan that code. <laughs> Straight away that looks a lot better. So we're, good, we're gonna use this. I think though, I think it maybe looks a little bit too cold. We're gonna warm this up a little bit because it still is a sunset sort of photo you can see on the, on the bottom of the photo. So we'll certainly do that. We'll increase the temperature and put a little bit of magenta into that. I think that, I think that looks actually pretty good. Um, I'm gonna leave it at that. Now that preset that I've just used is one of the free presets that you can get right now from my website. Head over to phonephotoschool.com.au. Presets for Snapseed are in the form of QR codes. So when you sign up to the newsletter down the bottom, it'll automatically redirect you to another page on the site and you'll get those three free presets. I'll link up the top here how you install them. They're pretty simple to do and they help you out with editing immensely. Also up there, you'll see that I've actually put there for sale 10 presets for Snapseed. They're five bucks Australian. For you guys in the States, that's probably like a buck 50 or something. It's not much, our, our dollar's not doing that well. But it helps me do things for you guys on this channel. I appreciate any support that you guys can give me, I really do. Anyway guys, I'll see you next week.